If you guys have been following my channel for a little while, you might remember a game that I called a hidden gem for its fun gameplay, deep customization, retro aesthetics, and just, it was just an overall good time. And that game is finally launching after years in early access. Five years ago, actually, it got greenlit on Steam. And that game is Chronicon. So Chronicon will be hitting its official release tomorrow, August 21st, with its fifth act dubbed The Final Frontier. And for those who've been waiting for this game to fully release, the developer is going to keep the game at its $9.99 price point for a few days into launch before it increases, quote, a few dollars per the dev. So I'm guessing we're going to see the game around $15 total. Now, this isn't the end of the game. He's going to have post-launch plans. He plans on having some small all free content and then major paid DLC down the line. Now keep in mind this game has no monetization. There is no cash shop. There are no cosmetic items to buy. This is a you buy it you get it style game in the days of old like back in the 90s or the early 2000s is wild. But anyway so let's talk about what Chronicon actually is and for those of you who have never heard of the game Chronicon is a pixel art action RPG that revolves around a mysterious device called the Chronicon, and this device is used to relive the memories of past heroes, which are represented by the story acts that you play through. In each act, you're going to be going through a different quest line in a different zone against different enemies, different bosses. Now you're going to keep the same character, so it's not like in Act One I have to play as the Ranger, in Act Two I have to play as the Warlock. No, no, no. You're going to keep the same character and go through all of these different acts. It's just the storytelling that changes. So you can also play the game with up to four players through Steam's remote play. Now it is recommended that you keep a separate character for single player versus multiplayer. The dev said that just makes things easier. So if you want to play with your friends, have either everybody start off at the same time. So each person is level one and you can play up together. Or if you do want to bring a character over from single player, it looks like you have to export your save file and send that to all the other players so that they have your information so you can load into the game with them. That sounds pretty messy, so I recommend just start all at the same time. So let's get down to brass tacks. How does this game actually play out? Well, to get started, you're going to choose from one of four classes. You have the Templar, who is a warrior that focuses on melee combat, damage absorbs, and healing. And if you're looking for a, just an absolute tanky beast, the Templar is the perfect class for you. I mean, lots of self-healing gives you some leeway if you make mistakes early on. She is a slower class than the rest, but she is steady, like a turtle. High defense, slower. You also have the Berserker. The Berserker is a brawler who uses the power of dragons to win battles. Very mobile and high DPS. This class right here is perfect for people who like melee and who like to zip around the battlefield. The Berserker has some great combos that allow him to teleport into a pack, deal some big AoE explosions, and then clean up the rest. Incredibly fun to play, so highly recommend that one. The Warden. This is a ranger, and she uses the power of nature to summon creatures or cast spells. And she is a great character for people who like to deal damage from afar and let your companions kind of soak damage or hold aggro. So basically, if you like playing a Beastmaster, this is a great class. She does have some other builds that make her a deadly ambush sniper if you don't like pets. So don't think, oh, she has pets, she only plays with pets. No, no, no. If you want to play a ranger, zero pets, she has some builds for that as well. And then you have the Warlock, who is my personal favorite. He is a powerful magician, highly versatile, can deal damage up close, can deal damage from range. Now this character right here is the one I have the most experience with, has some great end game sets to build around. And like I mentioned, you can either set him up as like a death knight to dish out some melee damage and build up your absorbs, or you can create a plague doctor style build to put literally dots on everything, run through the map and just let everything die around you. So it's fantastic. If you like to play like an Essence Drain build in Path of Exile, this guy, perfect for you. So once you've settled on a class, next thing you're going to choose, do you want Hardcore or do you not want Hardcore? I'm definitely not brave enough for Hardcore. I feel like my heart couldn't handle it. But for those of you people that are, I salute you. Please carry on. Lastly, you're going to have to decide on difficulty between Casual, Normal, Heroic, Epic, and Legendary. Each one of these is going to give you more boosts to Magic Find, Experience, 
Also, keep in mind, some items will only drop on Legendary. So that's gonna be something you're gonna to work towards. After you hit Legendary, all of a sudden you're gonna start seeing new items drop, which is great. and gives you those milestones to progress towards. Now, I'm gonna be brutally honest here, guys. Please, please start off on Normal. Not because the game is hard, but because if you pick anything above Normal, your first few hours are going to move very slowly. It's going to take quite a while to work through the first act and a lot of people can get burnt out you can always change this later you just go back to the title screen choose your character click on your difficulty and go up and truly i recommend doing that once you start plowing through everything swap it to a higher difficulty get those bonuses and start seeing that new loot drop and that's one of the big things too understand when you need to go up a difficulty or down a difficulty there are no penalties for going up and down other than less or more bonuses so let's move into class progression now like any other action rpg you're going to gain skill points when you level up that you can spend in any of the four skill trees per class four and you will also gain mastery points from time to time that you can spend in more of a general tree that gives some generic stats like movement speed but also gives you useful upgrades things like forcing treasure chests and longer require keys as you go through your dungeons and your maps you're going to start seeing treasure chests some will require keys some will not require keys being able to take something like this keys are no longer useful to you you don't have to pick them up you can filter them out in your item filter which we'll talk about but it also gives you another good source for acquiring gear think about all the chests you go by you don't have keys for that could be holding that next legendary or that next unique that's going to push you to the next difficulty setting so something like this incredibly crucial max level is 100 so you're gonna have a hundred skill points to use however your mastery tree I was just talking about is never ending so you can literally just keep building those points and investing them until the end of time now the skill trees themselves are fairly unique they each offer a different damage type they do have a little bit of synergy between each other so for instance you're gonna have some nodes that will allow you to kick off certain effects that would have been otherwise impossible to use for instance like a frost skill activated a poison effect and then that poison effect kicking off a shadow effect and vice versa there's all sorts of different things you can play off of each other some are more useful than others but that's something that's pretty cool now these trees themselves are similar to the way that grim dawn's trees operate so as you spend more points in the tree more nodes will become available to you you can choose to invest in these nodes or skip them However, you do have to spend points in a node to continue progressing the tree. There isn't a class mastery bar like in Grim Dawn, that little bar along the bottom where you can just invest points and it progresses your actual tree unlocks. There is not that in Chronicon, so you do have to drop points into specific nodes to unlock the rest of the tree. It's also worth noting that unless you have certain gear that calls for it, I've found that specializing in a single element, a single damage type, is the most valuable in Chronicon. Others might disagree, that's just what I found, that's what allowed me to push as far as I have into endgame. Next up is gear. So gearing in Chronicon is incredibly fun. I, I love the gear in this game. I mean, it's very imaginative, there's some really cool stuff out there, they're fun to build around. Now gear themselves, it comes in six flavors. You have Ordinary, Enchanted, Epic, Unique, Legendary, and true legendary you can start finding unique items at level 10 and legendary items at level 30. now there are set items in the game these aren't mandatory right they're not mandatory but they can be incredibly powerful if built correctly and some sets are perfect for doing things like exploring or dungeon delving you have increases to magic find movement speed now other ones they're built just to basically melt the hell out of everything anything in front of you needs to die and it will die and that's exactly what those sets are perfect at but you don't get any of those extra bonuses like magic find but just like any other action rpg chronicon does have a ton of items that drop a ton they're all over the damn place now luckily this dev put in a loot filter that's pretty nice it is a solid loot filter you can filter out different rarities you can filter different items for other classes you can filter consumables and so on and so forth you can also press q on your keyboard to aoe loot 
anything that meets your filter settings, which makes running through dungeons nice because as you're speed running through something, you can just hit Q and it picks up everything you need and continues moving and it leaves everything you don't want behind. So for a game made by one person, I'm really excited to see loot filters added, especially when there's AAA developers out there that still don't have them in their game. Beyond loot drops, gear can also be augmented even further with enchanting and gems. And gemming is exactly how it sounds. You find a gear with gem slots. These come in different shapes that grant different bonuses. You can re-roll those slots if you don't like them, or if you do like them, then you can just slot the gem you need. Now, enchanting is a little bit different. You can re-roll affixes on entire items. You can re-roll certain affixes to try and get a higher roll. You can re-roll certain affixes if you don't like it at all. And there's quite a bit of flexibility in here. So if you get a piece of gear and you don't like one thing on there, you can lock all the other stats and just re-roll that one if you really, really want to. And to round out all of the other vendors, you also have transmutation which the transmutation vendor allows you to take certain items and morph them into something else. So for instance, you can take these four unique helmets. You can combine them into one legendary helmet that has an incredibly powerful perk. Now I'm not gonna give up any spoilers, but just keep your eye out for some flavor text referencing those helms. And lastly is the gambler, which yes, Chronicon decided to put in a gambler it lets you burn crystals for a chance at some decent gear. Now I went ahead and bit the bullet for you guys and I spent a ton of time and money there and it looks like she has about a 1 in 10 chance at a unique item and a 1 in 20 chance at a legendary item at level 100. So the odds aren't too shabby, however you have to meet either that level 10 or level 30 milestone for those uniques or legendaries to actually drop. The last thing I want to talk about is endgame. So Chronicon's current endgame is called Tinka's Domain, which you'll understand if you play it. Tinka is a little NPC, but this slice of the world has a portal to something called anomalies. Now anomalies can occur out in the actual maps themselves, but anomalies in Tinka's domain, you can fire them up. These are randomized maps, and you can do these endlessly, you can do them in a series capped with a boss fight, you can do them one at a time, it's really all up to you. And they come in different difficulties, and these difficulties stack on top of your game difficulty. And they also bring modifiers to the table. And some of these modifiers are just insane. I mean, there's a top tier mythic anomaly that increases enemy health by 213 million percent and increases their damage by 60,000 percent. Like what even is that? That's, that's just, it's insane. Like what build is out there that's going to chew through a 213 million percent increase? And I know there's people out there that do it. I'm just saying my build does not. I mean, I've comfortably been able to knock out legendary and mythic one anomalies with the build I have now, but anything above that is a big jump is gonna require some decent gear upgrades. And ultimately, Chronicon is driving players to chip away at endgame in search of either a better piece of gear for their current build or a drop that completely changes their play style and they can start to transition towards that. So far, I mean, it's been a fun experience, right? I've had a great time. It's very addicting. It's very addicting that you just want to continue kind of firing these anomalies up and seeing what other legendaries and true legendaries you can get. But I do really hope that there is a variation or a different mode that comes along with Final Frontier or shortly after to give Chronicon more variety in its endgame offering. Because I can see this kind of falling into the same category that Diablo has, where it's just greater rifts, you know? The entire endgame revolves around greater rifts, greater rifts, greater rifts. For Chronicon, it's anomalies, 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 and they just get more and more difficult. And I think if there's always that carrot, if there's always something to chase after, then sure, there's a reason to do that. But what happens when you're able to knock out that top tier mythic anomaly with a 213 million percent increase to health and 60,000 percent increase to damage? Once you knock that off, you're kind of done and you're waiting for the next thing. So that's going to be something that I'm curious to see how Chronicon navigates that. I don't think people are going to reach that incredibly quickly, but at the same time, it's good to prepare for the future and understand what's coming. I know there will be, this guy's a great developer. He's just been crushing it since day one. So I totally trust him and I know he has some great plans for this game. So that's it guys, that is Chronicon in a nutshell. Now this game is much more deep than I went into, especially when you get into the enchanting, the gemming, the gearing and all of that. But I do wanna hear from you guys. 
who has actually played this game? Have any of you heard of it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Are you excited for release and finally being able to finish up that fifth act? Also, I know some people are going to ask, yes, you can turn off or lower screen shake. Yes, you can turn off blood. You can customize the UI and you can adjust various UI elements. So those are all things you can do within the game because I know some people get really bad motion sickness with screen shaking and the developer took that into consideration. So as always guys, there's all the links in the description below. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.